A mountain teenager is charged with first-degree murder. Deputies say 17-year-old Crystal Howe shot her father, then hid his body in Maggie Valley. She was captured in Georgia. News 13's Ashley Searles is streaming live at the Haywood County Sheriff's Department. Ashley, this case began to unfold this weekend. That's right. And right now, deputies aren't releasing when they believe this murder may have happened. But the case opened this weekend, and the investigation continues tonight. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and choosing to hang out with me once again. This week I decided to discuss the death of Michael Howell, whose life was unfortunately taken by his own daughter, Crystal. I recall this case from a few years ago, and I always thought it was not only a crazy thing to read about, but also just tragic in more ways than one. I don't want to give too much away, so let's just keep the intro short. I invite you to join me for this case. So sit back, relax, and let's dive in. Crystal Brooke Howell was born on August 24, 1996 to her parents Michael Howell and Christina Rester in Augusta, Georgia. She was the youngest of their children with the oldest being her sister Sierra. From a very young age, her family described Crystal as a spitfire. She was rambunctious, yet lovable but trouble always seemed to find its way to her. Before she even started her teenage years, Crystal began to show symptoms of mental illness. Her nature was described as mischievous, since at first she was only doing small things like lying and stealing. Her parents grew more concerned when she began to damage property, with one example being a time where she lit the neighbor's patio pillows on fire. These events convinced her mother that there was something more to this child. She had growing issues that needed to be addressed. Christina attempted to get the child into counseling and on medication to help curb this behavior, but her father, Michael, refused. He was against getting any kind of professional help for a few reasons. He felt medication would alter their child, almost numbing her personality. Michael felt Christina was pushing this as a way of dealing with Crystal, essentially putting a metaphorical pillow on her face. Counseling was out of the question for Crystal as well, since he felt she would be mocked and ridiculed by schoolmates for being in counseling. Michael claimed this is what happened to him when he was young and forced into counseling and didn't want his daughter to suffer the same mistreatment. Michael and Christina were constantly at odds about the best way to handle Crystal, that it became a daily struggle and one they no longer wanted. Amongst all of this animosity, Christina revealed a dark secret. Sierra, the couple's first child, was not Michael's daughter, and this was the final straw. After 19 years together, the couple divorced when Crystal was only 12. Christina didn't want Crystal to live with her since she wouldn't listen and Crystal had a very hard time with authority. It often caused rifts within the household. So Michael took his daughter and moved her to Maggie Valley in North Carolina, where he invested in an eight-bedroom home in Sheepback Mountain. The move seemed to cause Crystal to lash out more, and Michael felt at first it was just typical teenage behavior until she began partaking in hard drugs and disappearing for weeks at a time. She also began to shoplift and self-harm. Her new hobbies resulted in her father being much more strict with her. One of the punishments was moving her to an alternative school to not only help her catch up with education, but also to help keep a closer eye on her. Michael confided in close friends, believing his daughter possessed no conscience since she never showed remorse for any of her actions. At this new school, Crystal made friends with two girls named Summer and Taylor. The group spent a lot of time together becoming fast friends who felt Crystal was fun, energetic, but didn't like to show her emotions. Despite her mishaps, Crystal and Michael were very close. Crystal claimed to love her father very much and even called him her best friend. 
but all of this changed on February 24th, 2014. Michael and Crystal were out doing some shopping when, once again, Crystal was caught shoplifting. Michael was very embarrassed by the whole fiasco and felt his daughter needed to correct her wrongdoings. He made her return and apologize to the employees of the store before forcing her back to their home. Michael fell asleep on the couch while Crystal went and took a shower. During this shower, Crystal began to think about killing her father. She went back and forth many times before finally committing herself to the act. She went into his room, got his gun, then shot him point blank in the left side of his head, killing him instantly. She took the spent shell casing and tossed it in the trash, along with the couch he was laying on, and lastly sold the murder weapon. Her father, however, wasn't as easy to dispose of. She dragged his body out to the shed they had on their property and placed him inside a blue storage container that was in the corner. She folded him into the container then covered him with a sleeping bag, then locked the shed like nothing even happened. The next day, she contacted her friend Taylor asking if she could come stay for a few weeks. Crystal explained her father had gone on a business trip to Georgia and would be gone for close to a month, and she didn't want to spend it alone. Of course, she accepted to help her friend, and everything was going well until day two. On her second day at Taylor's, Crystal claimed to get a distressing call from her mother. Crystal's father had killed himself in Georgia, supposedly. Crystal was very distraught, and her friends comforted her, unaware of the web of lies she was weaving around them. It seemed Crystal was alone and by herself at just 17, and she didn't want to be. So she invited Summer and Taylor to move into her father's home with her, promising to take care of all expenses in exchange for their company. The girls obviously took this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and moved in with their friend. It was reported Crystal grieved for her father, but it was very short-lived. The home she once shared with them became the party hub. Friends described it as never being a dull moment, and kids from all over showed up to Crystal's parties whether she knew them or not. Crystal went as far as installing a stripper pole in the kitchen and always keeping copious amounts of illicit substances for her and her party guests to enjoy. Her new lifestyle was being funded with her father's bank card, which was miraculously left behind. Her father, who was a retired sports editor for the Columbia County News Time, had a healthy savings thanks in part to his grandparents who left him a hefty inheritance and his career. During one of their raging parties, Crystal became very out of it, according to her friends and it took her almost two weeks to recover, leading them to believe she was drugged with something she wasn't used to taking. After she recovered, Crystal decided she needed to go stay with her mother. She told her friends she would be gone for six months and didn't mind if they stayed. She didn't care what they did or who they had over, but she did have one rule. Don't go into the shed. Crystal explained to her friends that this was hers and her dad's special place, and she would appreciate if it were left in the same condition he had left it. They thought nothing more of this and let it be. Crystal withdrew about $3,000 and then drove off in her father's Land Rover with a U-Haul trailer full of all of her belongings. She arrived in Georgia at her mother's house, claiming her father had released her from his custody, and she now wanted to live with her mother. Christina was confused, and before she would allow Crystal to stay, she wanted proof of emancipation. Her mother and sister felt the entire meeting was just awkward, and Crystal just seemed empty. The visit was short-lived, though. She stayed long enough to take a shower before taking off to meet a friend. But the ugly truth was unfolding. On March 22nd, Summer, back in North Carolina, was planning to sell a pinball machine that was in the basement of the home. This was approved by Crystal since it would bring in extra money. 
She had two friends assist in moving the machine, Elijah and Anthony. The group unsuccessfully sold the product, and rather than move it back into the basement, Summer felt it was just easier to store it in the shed. Regardless of her friend's warning, she opened the lock and immediately the youths were taken aback by the horrendous smell. There, folded in the corner in a storage bin, was the body of 50-year-old Michael Howell. Immediately, they called the police. Summer felt she was being set up by her friend. Crystal was allowing her to live at the property full-time with no repercussions. And the person who Crystal sold the gun to was actually her father, who only paid $20 for it. Summer gave police all the information she had, and the next day in Georgia, Crystal was apprehended. On March 23, 2014, police found her holed up in a local Motel 6, and at first Crystal played ignorant. She claimed she didn't know why the police were looking for her or why she was even in custody. But, after a few hours of interrogation, she nonchalantly admitted to the murder, showing little to no remorse. She was charged with first-degree murder and concealing a death slash failing to report a death. During the investigation, police uncovered she searched on her phone how long does it take for a body to decompose. While in custody, Crystal was diagnosed with several mental health disorders. Her mental health became the hot topic during the trial, but prosecution pointed out Crystal was aware of her actions and she planned this murder. District Attorney Ashley Welch stated, quote, It's shocking that a young woman kills her father, but the fact that Howell then began to spend her father's money, use his house, and drive his car, all after hiding his body and the evidence of the crime. That's the motive. She wanted to live on her terms at the expense of Michael Howell's life. It's very sad." End quote. Crystal pled guilty to both charges through a plea deal. She was sentenced to five to seven years in prison for hiding the body and has to serve a minimum of 25 years before she is eligible to apply for parole for the murder. Crystal's mother spoke out, claiming Crystal had a tough upbringing and suffered from these mental health issues very early on. She felt her daughter was a sweet, loving person and not a heinous monster. She stresses mental illness is serious and it can be pushed to the limit, causing someone to snap. And she thinks this was the case for Crystal. Crystal Howell is currently incarcerated at Anson Correctional Institution in Polkton, North Carolina. She will not be eligible for parole until 2039, at which point she will be 45 years old. What are your guys' opinions on Crystal not getting preventative measures and help when she first started showing signs of mental illness? Like, do you believe she could have benefited from early on counseling or maybe even proper medication? Because her mother claims that these mental illness signs started to show as early as eight. I'm curious to know your thoughts, so leave them below and we can chat about this. Also, if you found this to be informational or maybe even entertaining, consider giving the video a thumbs up to let YouTube know you want more. And if you're not subscribed yet, join us because we would love to have you under the ash tree. Also, I had a handful of new subscribers come on, so I want to say welcome. I am Ash, and I'm glad to have you here. Thank you to everyone who continues to support me and show their appreciation for what I'm doing here. You guys really are the best, and you make my week. Thanks so much, friends. Happy Memorial Day, stay safe, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.